Hi, my name is Ethan Buck, and I like good food, lifting weights, and martial arts. I want to share with you how I use those three things to go from a 300 plus pound degenerate party animal who is even occasionally homeless to becoming a lean, mean, fighting machine. Welcome to Food, Fitness, and Fisticuffs. <coughs> Starting in 1932 in a little shack next to his own meat market that he ran his own cattle to, barbecue legend Edgar Black started a legacy of world famous barbecue that has now lasted over 90 years. It wasn't until second generation pitmaster Edgar Black Jr. came along that they started an actual restaurant right across the street from the meat market. Carried on by his son and grandchildren, who have led the family name to winning multiple awards such as Best Overall Barbecue, Best Brisket, and Best Ribs, Black's Barbecue now has four locations across Texas, all in traditional, rustic, Texas-style restaurants with multiple pit smoking all day, every day. Each location is decorated with wooden, barn-style decor, longhorns, saddles, boots, spurs, various ranching equipment, and multiple framed photos of their rich family history, preserving an atmosphere that I'd imagine hasn't changed in several decades. The air is full of that rich smell only Texas-style, low and slow smoked meats can create. A smell you get familiar with when driving through the Texas countryside. Your mouth starts to water before you even enter the establishment. Their servers quickly assist you in piling up your plate with your favorite sides such as mac and cheese, coleslaw, cornbread, beans, pickled jalapenos, peach cobbler, pecan pie, and more. All before you get to the meat handler who will ask you which meats you'd like, how much, and which cuts you prefer. Not only are they well known for their brisket, chopped beef, sausage, and smoked turkey, but they're well known for their giant beef ribs, which you'll see I struggle to finish. Once you get settled in, you can visit the dressings bar for extra pickles, onions, and white bread, and slather their glorious meat creations in a tangy, yet slightly spicy, in-house barbecue sauce. It's food time. Ooh, it's hot. All right, time for a post-workout meal. Just did all the strongman training at Big Tech's gym here in Austin. If you missed that episode, don't worry. Link is down below, go back and watch it. But yeah, let's go check it out. We're gonna get some good barbecue at Terry Black's Barbecue. All right, so plot twist. The Terry Black's in Austin was incredibly packed. It's such a popular place. It was super loud that we actually didn't get to film there. So we drove out here to Lockhart to their second location same company, same family, same food. And I don't know about you guys, but if I have to wait too long after a workout, I get pretty ravenous. I'm pretty hangry right now, so hopefully I don't snap at anybody in line. But uh, yeah, so we're out here at Lockhart, so let's go eat. All right, sir, I will have a pickle. Um, is this potato salad? Yes, sir. All right, I'll have potato salad. All right. What else can I get for you? Uh, coleslaw. Coleslaw. Anything else? Do I see jalapenos there? Yes, sir. Maybe one of those. Anything else? Um, got more down here. More down here. Let's go with, uh, let's see, some green beans. Green beans, yes, sir. What else can I get for you? Do I see mac and cheese anywhere? Yes, sir. We got some mac and cheese. All right. Right, here, right here. All right. So a little bit of that. All right. Hold 
and cheese. Yeah, absolutely. It's already a really big plate. Okay, and uh, I think I think I think I might have uh, seen some pie here. Yeah, we've got pecan pie and apple pie right here. I'll do pecan, pecan pie. Yeah. All right, here you go, sir. Cool, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. Cool. How's it going? Do you mind if we film you slicing up some glorious meat? All right. Cool. Cool. So I'll take a quarter pound of brisket, please. Um, moist. I like it when they ask me if I want the moist meat. And uh, beef ribs. Let's do. What do they come in? Quarter pound. Way more. All right. Looks amazing. I think this might be enough. We got some more meat coming. That's three pounds? Oh, that's three ribs. Oh, okay, can I just get one rib then? Yeah. All right. I'm on a diet. on that same diet. Excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. Okay, let's do this. Probably the most exciting part of the day is when Ethan gets to eat. I always said you've got a few minutes between when I say I'm hungry and when I turn into a completely different person. So after all that strongman training and the events that we just did, the stuff I haven't done in a long time, I'm pretty damn hungry. And one thing I like to eat pretty frequently, obviously living in Texas, is barbecue. And that's not because it's just awesome, but it also really works well to fit your macros. You see, we've got lean protein, that's almost 100% protein. We've got some fatty protein, so we've got our fats here. We've got our carbohydrates in the cornbread. We've got more carbohydrates and fat here. So we're kind of going heavy on the fats today. It's partially one of the reasons I went low on the carbs, but also I needed to leave some room for some dessert peach cobbler they convinced me to get that and we've got just some healthy stuff and some hot stuff and of course being in texas we need a dr peppa it's diet all right so i've got the terry black's spicy barbecue sauce i like a bit of spice we're gonna go with the brisket first this is moist they call it moist just means that it's fatty and, mm, that is tangy and spicy fatty and melt in your mouth. This is amazing. Definitely something you'd overeat. All right, now we got the beef. Try that on its own. That is definitely very fatty. Kind of sweet. It's got a bit of a sweet taste to it itself. So try that with the sauce. I'm sure that's going to be amazing too. Fantastic. Mac and cheese, this was my favorite when I was a kid. You know, creamy. Here's something I did when I was a fat kid. After school, I would eat a whole box of Kraft macaroni and cheese and mix it with a whole jar of salsa. And then, I'm not even halfway done here. I would get those frozen bean and cheese burritos and put tons of cheddar on those so this melted in the microwave. And then I would dump the macaroni and cheese and salsa on top of that. I was a growing boy. I was a growing fat kid. Needless to say, uh, I love mac and cheese. We got the cornbread. I like to put this in the sauce. Do I have food on my face? Hmm. Well, I was gonna say I'm saving that for later, but I never save food for later. I don't know how to do that. I don't understand people who can save food for later. It's amazing. You gotta eat it. Got the spicy, the jalapeno. This is awesome. I'm in heaven right now. It's so hot in here. It's humid. 
I might get a cold beer to wash it down. But good guy, guys, if you're ever in Austin, make sure you come to Terry Black's. Okay, so I have two plates here. I'm gonna show you an example of how I would make amazing food fit my macros. You see, when I was really overweight and struggled to lose weight, the reason I struggled for the most part is because, well, I thought I couldn't eat amazing food like this and I felt overly restricted and I ended up binging and just, I was just in this perpetual cycle of restrict, binge, repeat, which is a very common pattern in people, okay? So if I were trying to lose weight and I was watching my calories and my macros and I wanted to go with a higher carbohydrate option, I would take the turkey, so I'll go with the lean protein first. All right, so we probably got 35, 40 grams of protein there. We're looking at roughly a palm size, okay? I would go with the cornbread, so that's my carbohydrates, and I would go with the peach cobbler for dessert, and I would do the green beans for health. So here, I have a lower fat option. It's mostly protein, carbohydrate with very minimal fat. That's really good if you're performing at a higher level. For example, I just did the strongman training. I don't really know how to eat this rib other than just be a caveman. So uh, I'm gonna be a caveman here. Oh my God. <laughs> that is, wow. That is like pure fat with a little bit of protein in it. Like I could, spit out a teaspoon of oil right now, a tablespoon. It's so good. Now, if I were personally less interested in fat loss and I wanted to eat for strength and size and or performance, which is kind of the same when it comes to nutrition, uh, I'm gonna go for the higher calorie versions of these proteins, which this is extremely high calorie, especially this fatty, this fatty rib right here. I'm gonna make sure I get plenty of carbohydrates there. So I'm gonna eat some carbs here. I'm gonna get some from the mac and cheese, which I've already eaten some, by the way. Um, I'm gonna get more carbs from this potato salad, plus some fat, and uh, of course, some, some healthy nutrients and things like that from the coleslaw. And a uh, wild card, I would add in pecan pie because I love pecan pie. So something I might do is just make a sandwich, right? Good old brisket sandwich. It's gonna be amazing and glorious. All right, let's check this out. Mmm, that is so good. So simple, yet very amazing. All right, how about if I pour some sauce on these ribs? Oh, God. Definitely not the fat loss diet that you would take, but it is absolutely glorious. Now, maybe if you're less active and you didn't want as many carbohydrates, you could probably do some of these fattier sources here and just remove the carbohydrate sources and be just fine with some proteins and fats. But something you want to be careful of is uh, fat is nine calories per gram. Protein and carbohydrates is four calories per gram. So fat has more than two times as many calories per gram than protein and carbohydrates. So very easy to overconsume fatty meats. Now, if you remove your carbohydrates, you can get away with a little bit more fat, but uh, it's definitely something you want to keep an eye on because uh, it adds up real quick. I had to get a to-go box for the beef ribs. This is just far too much. And uh, I'm a foodie. I can, I can put away a lot of food, but I have been defeated, admittedly. So that being said, like I said about the macros and whether your goal is fat loss or strength or performance, muscle gain, at the end of the day, we have to have a little bit of flexibility with what and how we eat. We can't be 100% rigid and neurotic. I always like to say, don't let perfection be the enemy of good. If we're trying to be perfect all the time, odds are we're not going to adhere to the plan very well. Long term, that is, anyhow. That being said, let's enjoy some pie and then go for a walk. Oh my God. Gooey, butterscotchy, pecan -y, sweet, crumbly, soft, everything. There's a lot of things going on here and all of them are amazing.
Okay, so I lied. It looks like I'm gonna have to save some for later. Uh, I have been defeated. Notice that the dessert is gone. I love a good dessert. I don't think I mentioned the turkey. This is amazing. It's smoked turkey. It's very lean. Really good with the barbecue sauce. Finished up everything else. I can't say how good this is. It's amazing. I'm a bit of a foodie. As uh, I believe Louis C.K. once famously said, the meal isn't over when I'm full. The meal's over when I hate myself. Anyhow, we're gonna go for a walk. All right. Thank you. No problem. Good food, right? Great food, huh? Sure. All right, guys, they have been nice enough to invite us into the smokehouse to see how they're smoking their meat. So let's check it out. How do we get in there? Other side? Right around. All right, thanks. Guys, come on in. Cool. What's up, y'all? Howdy. Good, how was it? It was amazing. Good. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. The briskets have been on for about four hours. Four hours. Yeah. Every brisket goes on for about four hours? No, these have only been on for four hours. Oh, okay. No, no, no. These will go for another eight hours. About eight each? No, 12 hours. Like okay. Another eight hours. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And then all of this is brisket? All brisket. Cool. That's all we're cooking right now. They're just having to be all enough for brisket. Okay. So we've got about, we have five smokers total. We have three right here, two right behind the restaurant. And they're all full of five pits full of brisket. So we got about... There's five of these total? Wow. And they're all with four briskets right now. That's an insane amount of brisket. All for tomorrow. How many pounds of brisket total in the five smokers? Um, probably like four or five pounds of brisket, six pounds like after coke, so 1,500, 1,600 pounds, 1500, just, just the briskets. 1,500 or 1,600 brisket. pounds of just brisket. Yeah. And do you sell all of that in one day? Yep. That's amazing. Well, today, it's a slow Sunday. We'll sell probably close to 300 briskets today. Okay. On a busy Saturday, we can go anywhere between 400, almost about 400 briskets. 400 briskets on a busy yeah. Saturday. That is insane. Yeah, about 2,500 pounds of briskets. How much do you eat? Me? Yeah. I don't eat that much anymore around here, but uh, we'll, we'll try it out always just to make sure everything's still good. Right. But, uh, I'm a meat eater, but so I like it all still. You yeah. get sick of it? Eh, I don't smell it anymore, so that's... That's probably a lot of people's problems. Right. But uh, I like meat, so it's, we have a couple different kinds of meat, so right. it's not too bad. How much of your sweat actually goes on to the meat? <laughs> At this point, not that much, but when these get about nine hours, these will get wrapped in butcher paper. Okay. So we're actually individually pulling every brisket out, pulling oh. the door, sitting them down on the table, wrapping them. There's probably some sodium getting added in. Nice. At that point. Yeah, added flavor. <laughs> Slightly cannibalistic. <laughs> yeah, we especially this time of the year, we're gonna we'll be completely drenched in sweat. The whole show. Yeah, it's about 102 today, I think. Yeah, it's 102 outside. It's about 130, 135. 130 in here right now, and inside of the smoker, how much is we're how hot is that? 285 right now. 285 in the smoker. All right. Yeah, at this point, it's about 275. Anywhere between 275 and 285. And how many hours a day do you sit in front of the smoker? We we work eight hour shifts. Oh my god. Shifts. Do you do a lot of electrolytes? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Salt. Uh, anything with salt in it. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, yeah. We we cook twenty four seven. So for the second shift, and then there'll be another shift that'll come in tonight to finish the rest of the cooks. Amazing. Because these won't these went on at three o'clock this afternoon, so these will come off at three o'clock in the morning. Wow. Twenty four hour smoking, nonstop oh. project. Yep. <laughs> do you ever go in a sauna? No. I okay. Do. do you do ice <laughs> baths or cold plunges? I never have. No. Okay. Yeah. I hear, hear they're great, but yeah. I've, never, I've done sauna before. I've never done a cold one. Okay. You recommend it? I think after this, it would be awesome. You'd love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I kind of want to go do it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can tell you a place to go if you're looking. <laughs> I, I got one at home. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're in town? Uh, I live in the, the hill country. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Have you all been here before? I have, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Well, cool, man. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. What was your name? I'm Jason. Jason. Nice to meet you. Ethan. Thank you. But everything was good, y'all get to try everything? Oh, it was amazing, yeah, thanks man, awesome. cool. This man is responsible for a lot of games, true brisket lovers, only in Texas, man. Thank you so much. Of course, bud, All right. thank you. Terry Blacks. Wow, man, thank you so much. T-shirts, 
Wow. These guys really take care of everyone. Cool, man. Thank you. Free t-shirts. So I like to go for a walk after a meal for multiple reasons. One is, you know, for digestive purposes. Most people know that a, a brisk walk or a short walk after a meal helps you digest. And that's absolutely true. M most cultures in the world, you'll see you go for walks after meals, at least the elders. But there's something else that occurs when you go for a walk after eating. And that is the fact that it aids in what's called nutrient partitioning. So what that means is your body actually becomes more efficient at storing proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, or utilizing them, rather than just kind of, here's calories, right? So if you're interested, again, in health and fat loss, I recommend going on a 10-minute brisk walk after most of your meals. Of course, you can't do that with every meal because of your schedule or time of day, but if you can get a 10-minute brisk walk in after most of your meals, you're gonna to start to feel better, you're gonna digest your food, and your body's gonna absorb and utilize those nutrients a little bit more efficiently. I can only imagine how proud Mr. Edgar Black would be if he could see what his sons and grandsons have carried on in his name. An idea that he started during the Great Depression that is continuing to grow today. It's rare to find such tradition in today's world. Men following in their father's footsteps to uphold a family legacy. No matter how big or small it may be, I think it must be an honor to carry the flame that your forefathers ignited for you. In this case, it was the spark of a small smokehouse shack that grew into a world famous flame, smoking and charring meat for the world to enjoy. So it's unexpected moments like that that I like to stop and appreciate. You see, that guy not only shared his craft with us and how he makes brisket for hundreds of people every day, but he also gave us free t-shirts. I always like to stop and appreciate these moments because there's so many things that we can focus on that might be negative. Yet there's so many things we can connect on like food and exercise and martial arts. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter where you're from, what language you speak, the color of your skin, your sexual preference or what religion you come from. There are things you can connect on outside of all of those things that matter more. If you travel the world, I've been to over 40 countries. I've connected with people who don't speak a word of English over something as simple as food or the fact that we respect each other on how hard we both train or how hard we can get hit and take hits and give hits in martial arts. These are the things that we should be focusing on more than all of the negative things that separate us. On that note, guys, the next episode, we will be training Muay Thai in one of my favorite gyms. Muay Thai is a sport that I've been doing for close to 20 years. It's something I absolutely love. It's got a huge place in my heart and it always will. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Remember to like and comment below for the algorithm and click the notifications button to be notified for when we upload new videos. So let's get into some Muay Thai. Ha <laughs> ha